I have been carrying the Bushcraft Satchel from Helicon Tex for a little over four months now on a regular basis. And I think now I'm probably ready to give you a good review of it. If you're interested, keep watching. Okay, so let's go over the basic specifications for the bag and then we'll look at the features and then we'll talk about what I really like about it and those things that I'd like to see changed at some point. I'm also going to be putting all the specifications in the show notes below so that you can see them. It'll be both in metric as well as English sizes. So once again, this is the Bushcraft Satchel from Helicon Text. It is the second of three products that they did send me for testing. The one that I have here is in adaptive green, but they do have a range of colors, everything from coyote to olive green to camouflage, even a denim color now, as well as black. And I think there may be a couple of other colors that I haven't uh, mentioned. So the bag itself is a 17 liter bag and it is, well, as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff in this. It's, it's actually very, very big and the downside of that, of course, is that it's quickly, you can put too much stuff in it. So the dimensions are roughly, I say roughly because again, I'll put them in the show notes below, 12 inches by 12 inches by 7 inches. So you can see, that's a hefty size bag. So on the inside, and I'm going to show you that separately so that you can see it, are two pockets for water bottles or cook kits, and they're quite sizable as well. And, and there is one small zippered administration uh, pouch for putting things like keys or wallet in. So let's work our way from starting from the front and then work our way to the sides of the bag. So on the front of the bag is a zippered pocket. Well, you can also see right here the, uh, uh, the label that they attach it shown as part of their bushcraft line of gear but there is one zippered pocket on the front which extends all the way across it's quite deep covers down so about seven inches in depth down to the bottom so what i normally carry in there and i must well start unloading this as i go so i can get down to show you what's inside is my my cell phone which is also acts as my camera a lot of the time and a small first aid kit today things that i want to get to fairly quickly on either end of the bag are three rows of Molly Pals attachments that allow you to get extra things attached to the outside of the bag. I would caution you, um, don't, don't be too quick to attach things to the outside of the bag because it very quickly gets too heavy to carry. What I'm carrying on this one today though is, now I don't have it strapped on but I could have because it also has the, the Molly attachments, is my Ontario Knife Company Blackbird SK5 survival knife, which is Molly attachable on the back. I also have a carabiner, carabiner hanging through the belt loop at it right now because that's how I keep it attached to the bag for short term carry, if you will. And that is something I want to point out. There are two pockets running down the either end of the bag. They're the same in both ends, by the way. Two pockets. One of them is sewn across the bottom and the other one is open like a pass through. And what's nice about that is things like my knife I can slide in that pocket where it bottoms out and I know it's not going to fall through. Uh, I still have to have some means of attaching it so I don't catch it on a branch and accidentally pull it out. This is for something I don't want to carry in my belt. Now normally of course I do carry my knife in my belt but I just wanted to be able to show you that you can put this on here if you want. The other pocket, the pass-through pocket, is not large, but it is large enough for a hatchet. If you want to pass something through like a hatchet with the smaller haft on it, it will pass through and hang down not too far. So, and of course, it'll stay where it is. So, also, there is a compression strap right here that allows you, if you haven't got the bag too overly loaded, you can bring the bag in, squeeze in a little tighter and get it a little bit smaller in dimension so it's not quite so big and bulky on your hip. That molly runs up the side of the bag so that it right to where the shoulder strap attaches and I'll show you the shoulder strap in a, in a minute because it's quite interesting so you have a number of more places you can attach things to and as I mentioned that's true at both ends of the bag now at this end of the bag I've just got my Baco Laplander saw this is not a big pocket so my silky 240 uh, Gumboy 240 um, actually doesn't fit in here. It's not quite big enough for that. That's not to say that I couldn't carry it some other way if I wanted to carry it inside the bag around my belt, but just for purposes of demonstration and for going a little lighter, I've just bought my uh, Baco with me today. Take that out. 
What I also want to mention is the materials that are, that are used to make the bag. Of course, it's the same as the Bushcraft Matilda from Halicontax. Everything is Cordura brand, heavy grade or heavy denier nylon. Uh, all the zippers are YKK. I have not had anything bind or fail or in any way. They work very well. Uh, nice thing about the zippers is the pull tabs have a little piece of paracord with just a little bit of rubber around the outside to give you something to grab onto. And when they come to the end of their travel, there's a little what they call zipper garage that they can slide up into just to protect the ends so that there is uh, won't, won't uh, get caught or separated or pulled apart, I guess. Also protect it from weather to some degree. On the bottom of the bag, there is another row of molly, just a single row. Uh, might have been nice if there was two rows of mollies because what happens is, as you can see, these uh, straps that I have on the bag are something I added myself. Uh, I used these today to pack the tripod on that my video camera is sitting on right now. That's how I carried it into the wood, it's just strapped to the bottom of the bag. I say it'd be nice to have two rows across here just to distribute the pull on the bottom of the bag a little bit. But the truth is, that's just a temptation to add even heavier stuff. So it's probably a good thing that this is all, it, it, there's only one row here. Okay, a couple labels on the end indicating the Helicon text and the Cordura brand nylon that is used in this bag. And let's see, what else can I show you about the, oh, the shoulder strap. So I have shown in other videos, this is a piece of elastic I keep around the shoulder strap and the only purpose for that is if I'm carrying a jacket or a sweater or something like that because it's uh, chilly and when I start off or it looks like it might get chilly later in the day, rather than pack it in the bag, I can just strap it to the outside of the bag for quick access. So that's all that's for. The shoulder strap itself is detachable from the backpack with Fastex buckles, heavy duty Fastex buckles. And that's true at both ends. Now, that's got its positives and maybe a miss as well. So as a positive, you can take the shoulder strap off. You can turn it around if you want to, and I do have a reason for turning it around. I'll talk about in a minute. But with the shoulder strap removed, what might have been nice is that, so here's the bare ends, both female ends of the, of the buckles. It might have been nice if one was male and the other one was female, and then you could bring them together and create a handle for the bag without the shoulder strap attached. Be that as a bay, it's not a deal breaker by any means. Uh, what I have found that it's useful for having the ability to remove the shoulder strap is it has to do with this slider right here. So the shoulder strap is fully adjustable. It is two inch heavy grade, heavy grade webbing and it uh, is, allows it to be adjusted quite long. So at the length I have it right now, when it sits over my shoulder, there's a tendency for this to dig into the top of my shoulder. Uh, that's only because I'm wearing a shirt, not a jacket, but just the same. With any amount of weight in the bag, this starts to dig in. So what might have been nice is if they had added a pad, a sliding pad that could have gone on the strap, and of course that would have uh, stayed in one place while the bag moves around on your shoulder and distribute the weight a little bit more. Uh, it's not a deal breaker by any means. Two inches is pretty wide. What I did find though is that I can reverse the strap and then that removes the pressure point from that little buckle. Now let's just talk about reversing things. So this bag, with the weight in it, and I, I haven't weighed how much I've got it in it today. It's actually a little lightly packed from, from what I quite, quite often uh, put in here. But what I have found is, I mentioned that this, it's almost an issue that you can put this much stuff in here. Very quickly, I put too many things in here, it starts to weight the bag down quite a bit. Now the bag is certainly going to show you, as you'll see, it's so well constructed with heavy extra stitching and webbing over the, all the seams inside, but the extra uh, weight that you can put in this bag means you're going to be carrying a lot of weight on one shoulder. Highly recommend, first off, don't overload the bag, but two, if you were going to have it, carry the bag on a, so, so that you can keep the balance from right to left, shift it once in a while from left shoulder to right shoulder uh, just to distribute the weight and you don't have too much weight on one shoulder for too long a period of time. Okay, I, you can also see that I have attached here is a couple of those Grimlocks and uh, they're great for uh, hanging things off the outside of the bag like a pair of gloves. I could hang my cooks off there. Uh, things that I'm not uh, uh, too worried are going to get caught in the brush and pulled, uh, pulled off of the backpack or pulled off of the, the haversack. So yeah, that's the basic feature. Now let me empty it out because I want to show you the inside of the bag and show you those two pockets as well as the stitching inside of the bag. So very quickly, 
Now this is also great in that you can see that the zipper extends past the width of the bag and it's a design that you don't see in a lot of bags but what that allows for is is that the bag can be opened up a quite a quite a bit more than it would be if it had just stopped at the at the edges of the bag so this is a top loading bag which makes it very easy for getting into while you're carrying it off your shoulder you don't have to lift a flap off to get inside you just unzip it and you're inside and the zippers on top of I haven't mentioned this already the YKK zippers there's two of them so they run in different directions so you can open it either direction. I suppose if one did fail, you still have the second one to use by itself, but to be honest, I don't foresee them failing anytime soon. There's no real tension on it and they are high quality. So quite often what I carry is a kneeling pad. This is one of those very inexpensive foam pads. I carry this at the back of the bag where it rests against my hip and I do that for a reason. It's because once again, putting a lot of things inside of this bag, you can sometimes get a pressure put against your hip. It could be anything from your keys to a water bottle to, well, I guess anything at all that's inside the bag. This just provides me a little bit of padding between my hip and the contents of the bag. So lay that out. Water bottle today is smaller, clean canteen water bottle, but you'll see I could get a much larger one in the pocket that's inside of the bag. Actually, in the other pocket, and there's one at either end, in the other pocket is my cook kit for today. So it's just my Tom Shoe Titanium cook kit. It's because I was traveling a little light. Oh, traveling light. Bowls, mugs, cookware. So, yeah, a little bit of weight there. A water bag for extra water. My Sawyer Mini and Canuck Vecto uh, water purification or filtering system. Small bag of cordage, should always have cordage, cordage, wire, things like that in there. Small fire kit today, and that's a backup to the ferro rod that I have on my belt. An essential for me, which is a toiletry kit, so I have all my toiletry needs for the day in here. Food bag, just a light food bag, a little bit of a, a lunch and some bars in there as well. Uh, this is that uh, Luxata little bug inspired wood stove that we had talked about in a previous video and i'm carrying that we're under a fire ban so i can't have a fire today but what i like about this it is so light and is just the right side to act as a windscreen for the alcohol stove that's inside of my tom shoe kit so it's worth taking along and if i felt that i could have a fire because the fire ban had been lifted then i do have a wood stove that i could use and oh yeah my repellents my bug repellents some sticks that fell inside now I got anything else in here? Okay, no. So I am gonna to have to reposition the camera so you can see the inside of the bag and just see the construction of it. Okay, this might be a little difficult. Hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to catch some light so you can see inside the bag. I am out in the woods and the sun is coming down through the trees. So I've got my fingers using, uh, using my fingers to hold the bag open. And now you can see the pocket at either end of the bag and they have a gathered elasticized top. There's also, I'm gonna turn the bag around so you can see it. This is the zippered pouch that I mentioned was inside. So it's a mesh bag running about eight inches by eight inches with a zipper at the top. And that's, I call it in a min pouch because it allows me to put things like my wallet in there, maybe my keys, just, but then again, I have to make sure that there's something behind it so that's not uh, pushing into my hip. I did say I wanted to show you the seams inside of the bag and I'll just show you this as representative, but all the seams are have a, a covering, a webbing. Now this is not just a nylon tape, if you will, or a uh, ribbon or anything. This is heavy webbing that is sewn over all the seams all the way around the inside of the bag. And wherever there is a pressure point, you can see there's heavy bar tacking to uh, maintain and hold that together. There's the elasticized pocket. Now you can see here, that's a big pocket. This is big enough for a 64 ounce clean canteen or, canteen or something similar. Um, you know what, That's I could probably, if I really wanted to push it, get two now jean bottles. I can certainly get two of those clean canteens like the one I'm carrying today in each end. What I like about the fact that there are pockets at either end of this bag is it allows me to distribute the weight so that I can put the heavier things at either end of the bag and they're not pulling from one side to the other. All right, that's the bag inside. I've shown you the outside. I've shown you the features. Let's see if there's anything else I can show you. So the Bushcraft Satchel from Helicon Text.
I can recommend this bag. It is well designed, well made, and I believe well worth the money that they're asking for it. And of course, I'll put the information in the show notes below where you can purchase this bag, both on Amazon in the US, as well as Canada, as well as from the company in Poland. I think you might want to take a look at their other line of materials that they, and other bush, uh, items in the bushcraft line as well. So yeah, I very much like this bag. I like the color of it. I like the design. I like the features of it. There's nothing I dislike about it. Maybe the addition of a shoulder pad from when I'm wearing a shirt and not a jacket, but that's about all. Okay, as I mentioned, I have, do have one more item that I'm going to bring to you that Helicontext did send me for a review, and uh, I just still have uh, to get some more time with it before I bring that to you. But until I do, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.